Good evening.
come back up. I guess I set you down too early. I'm sorry.
saying it, we'll take a look at it in just a second. Uh, I believe in the Christ who is slain on that cross still has the power to change lives today. Thank you. I owe you for that as well. Hey, is it alright if I just say real quick? I appreciate Mr. Dave being obedient. God put that on the heart. Boy, I don't know about anybody else. That helped me. I felt, I felt some get up and go. I, I'm going to address this in just a second. Um, I was talking today with Rob, Brother Rob, Miss Karen, Faith, and Miss Faith, and Miss Karen as well. Uh, there's some there's some prayers around the church that uh, I desire to see answered. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There's some people out that I desire to see back in. Yeah. There's some loss that I desire to see saved. Yeah. And uh, if if the world looks at it, some of it's pretty doubtful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of them. Some folks have been out such a long time. Hey, here's the truth. We've got a few new families in the church. Some of our people that's been out so long, some of our new folks probably go up to them and welcome them like visitors. Yeah. I, I promise I'm not being over blunt. That's just true. Right? You know, there's some folks who'll say, well, you know, Chase, they've been out so long, they're not coming back. And there are some folks, Chase, they're so deep in the mess, how are they ever going to get out of it? I believe that the Christ who was slain on that cross has the power to change lives today. Here's the reason why. For he changed me completely. Yeah. A new life is mine. Amen. I want to hit that first line one more time. And if you don't care, would you get you a vision of some folks that you prayed for? I believe that the Christ who was slain on that cross has the power to change lives today. Amen. Without a vision, people perish. I don't know. I just, uh, there's a lot of renewal of hope right there. For he changed me completely, a new life is mine. That is why by the cross I stay. Thank you, Ms. Karen. I do believe that because he changed me. I don't believe I'm going to give up on what he can do for somebody else. Right. 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 Uh, not sure what page number it is. Uh, the the Greenback Campbell. Press along, Weary Pilgrim. Yes, sir. Oh, church. <laughs> we just need to press. That's just about it. We just need to press. Good to see everybody out. <laughs> Praise the Lord for it. Hey, would you agree with me? And you'll hear this, I'm sure, in the future. Sometimes it's not really easy to worship. Yeah, right, yeah. About three of us that'll admit we're human. Amen. Yeah. The rest of us just come in shouting glory every minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, doing Holy Ghost backflips. But the uh, truth of it is, sometimes it's not easy. Yeah. But here's what I believe. Worship isn't about if it's easy. Worship is about is he worthy. Yeah. And as long as he's worthy, we worship. Amen. And it's not because we do it because we don't believe it. We believe he's worthy. So we'll worship. And worship will help us believe it. Amen. And that's the truth. What a blessing to be here tonight. I enjoyed this morning's meeting. Uh, God bless Preacher Josh. And I appreciate that so much. That, and Faith appreciates Preacher Josh too. This is two weeks straight that uh, Faith had not had to iron two shirts. <laughs> so I've got to wear the same shirt twice for two weeks. So if we keep going the way we go, going, Faith will probably shout for the first time. <laughs> We're blessed. We've, we've got a lot to be in prayer about here in the church. We've got a lot of people to be in prayer for. Uh, and it's needful, very needful that we do that. Uh, people that are on our hearts uh, need to pray for revival upcoming. There's a need for it. Need to pray for revival upcoming. Need to pray for God's man. Need to pray for a missionary. Somebody else, what's on your heart tonight?
there's visitors, and you tell her I've said this, that way it's not bad as gossip. There are some visitors, they just kind of come to sit on the bleachers and watch. She got the game with us this morning. She, she loved her some Jesus, and I appreciate that. I enjoy being in church with her too. So she's welcome here anytime, absolutely. Somebody else? Continue to remember um, when I was family. Yeah. Please do. Amen. Someone else. Jay said me, this may not be anything to anybody else, but who's up here looking out the windows? I think God the sunshine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boo. Yeah. Jessica a lot of time. Uh, pray for them. Yeah. Sometimes tragedies hit and we'll, we'll be sure to pray for folks the first few days. Uh, and then as time goes on, we just feel like people go back to normal. Uh, hurt doesn't leave that quick. So we need to pray for them. Anything else on your heart tonight? be all right that way we can be in unity together would you stand with us tonight then you find you stand with us i believe we have a need to pray don't you uh, i got tongue tied this morning in uh trying to do the tennessee dismissal go pray and come pray i think i told you come pray four or five times and i never did tell you go pray rob just told us we just need to pray so i'll probably just say just go pray somewhere but uh, I appreciate Josh's message this morning. You'll don't underestimate the blessing of you being close to Christ. So that's the truth. We need to pray together. We can pray standing. If you need to sit, if you need to kneel, you follow the Lord. Brother, uh, Brother Josh, if you would lead us to the Lord, my friend. Our God, we look to you, Lord. We thank you for this night. Lord, you are our help and you are our strength. Lord, I thank you for that. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being our friend. Jesus, I love you. And Father, I'm counting on you, Lord. For so much, I'm counting on you. Lord, I'm happy to be your vessel. But God, it's not in my strength. It's not in my strength to save. It's not in my strength, Lord, to call. Lord, a meeting. It's not in my strength, Lord Jesus, to call home a prodigal. It's not in my strength to give someone strength. It's not in me. Lord, there's nothing that's in me. But God, it's all in you. And I praise you for that. God, I do. I thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray for these requests that we've heard tonight. God, I pray for the requests we've heard this morning, Brother Mike, son. Father, I pray for the Wayland's family. Lord Jesus, I pray for Preacher Bud, Miss Jewel, Miss Bobby, Brother Aaron. Father, Miss Christy, Jesus, we miss her and we pray for her. Lord, I pray for Sydney, Jesus, please help, please. Please, Lord, I, and I believe you. And I thank you for Miss B being here this morning. Bless her, Lord Jesus, is my prayer. Bless her life. Father, there's so much on the heart. God, I pray for Brian and Jessica. Lord, I miss them and I love them. And Father, I just pray that you help them, Jesus. Help us as a church family to grow together. Father, battles, Lord, struggles, trials, tragedies will test our unity. But God, I pray we keep your word that what you've joined together, no man can put asunder. And you've joined this church together. I pray we march toward the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ. Help us tonight, Lord. Somebody get saved. Somebody get help. I thank you for the good songs that we've heard. I thank you for the, the reviving God that I felt. Lord, just in a hill called Mount Calvary. I do believe, Jesus. Father, I thank you for the good preaching we heard this morning. Father, I pray for our needs in the church, Jesus. Father, please, I'm counting on you. Lord, I love you. I believe you for tonight's blessing. In your name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. <laughs> Thank
got a song, you got a testimony, God's been good to you, and you'd like to brag on the Lord.
Anybody else got a song? I appreciate the lunch for family singing, don't you? Yeah. Get a blessing. Get a blessing out of it. I did get a little nervous. The boys didn't get up at first. I thought, I'm going to have to sing as good as Rylan and Dawson. So I appreciate you saving me on that one. God's good to us. Amen. I appreciate Him. If you have your Bibles tonight, if you'd like to look with us, look in the book of John. John tonight, chapter number 4. Fellas, if you want to, if you've got a message, we uh, want to pin me as it. Josh, you got part two with you? Pastor Bob, you need to finish off prayer in Look with us to John chapter number four. Uh, I'll say a word we've been preaching. And Courtney reminded me this morning, it's been a day or two since I, I, I've got to be in this, this position. I've uh, been preaching a lot on treasures, if you can remember back when Chase used to preach. Uh, but, uh, and I say this, I, I appreciate the preachers we got. I appreciate the preaching we had Sunday. The sources were amazing. And this Sunday night was a blessing and help. And I appreciate getting the pastor of church that I'm happy to be at. Well, that's good news for a couple of us. <laughs> um, but uh, I appreciate the help God's given us. But we've been preaching a lot on treasures, and I want to stay there. Not done by a long shot, but I've been examining this scripture for a while now. And uh, the church knows how God works with me at times, and I do believe that. I, I wouldn't try to be my own man. I want to be what Apostle Paul said. I, I want to be who I am by the grace of God and not by chase. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I want to stay maybe a little bit not long in John chapter number 4. If you're able tonight, stand with us. We'll give honor and reverence to reading the word of the Lord. John chapter number 4 tonight. And if it would be fine with you, there's, there's only a verse. Uh, that I want. We'll read, we'll read. <laughs> There's one verse I want, we'll read five to get there. Amen. Uh, verse number one. And there's there's probably three, four verses in this chapter I've got a burden for, but I believe God's going to let us share those at different times. Uh, when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again unto Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. This is the verse that I want to focus on for tonight. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called by the Sakar, and it's, it's near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And I, I want to reread that. Then comes Jesus to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Remember that, please. Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, set thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There come a woman of Samaria to, to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. That's the reading of God's word. You can be seated if you would. I'd like to read you again verse number 5 if it'll be fine with you. Uh, and I realize this doesn't sound like much, but I, I believe God has given us uh, a message for tonight. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is, by, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob and Joseph are both out of Old Testament. If, if we can remember Jacob, um, and I'll remind you, Jacob wrestled with the Lord. Do you remember that? Uh, and God changed his name. Is that right? God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Help me. <laughs> We went from playing Jeopardy to hanging up the phone. Amen. Uh, Jacob, God changed his name. Do you remember? And the story went like this. Jacob wrestled with the Lord. And uh, Jacob looks at God as he's wrestling. God looks at Jacob and he 
he says this, let me go for the day breaks. And Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And God says, what's your name? And Jacob says, my name is Jacob. And God says, your name is no longer Jacob, but it's Israel now. Uh, and Jacob said, surely the Lord, and, and, and God named this place Bethel, that Jacob was wrestling with the Lord. And the reason he named it Bethel, or Bethel, surely the Lord was in this place, and I knew it not. Is it okay if I let you know something? And we believe the promises of God. Romans chapter 8, verse number 28 says this, For all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. But can I let you know something? God can be working in your life and you not even see Him. God can be present in your life and you not even see Him. Uh, I, I, I know what Scripture says, and, and, and this we're going to get to the message you pray. Uh, no man cometh unto the Father except my, my Father which has sent me draw him. Amen. Yeah. But can I say this to you? If God is working in your life, he's always drawing you. Can you say amen? amen. Uh, well, what do you mean by that? If he's working in your life, if his presence is near you, no matter what moment you're in, no matter where you're at, God is drawing you to himself. There's not a moment you're in in your life, I promise you this, there's not a moment you're in in your life that God is not drawing you to himself. Amen. Uh, but here we find Joseph. Uh, and, and you pray as we look into some of these things. Uh, don't hang me so much with details if it would be fine with you. But Joseph, uh, I don't remember the exact number, uh, but I think the Bible compares Jesus to Joseph uh, I think somewhere around 120, 120, 136 times uh, that we see similarities between Joseph and Jesus. Uh, I, I, I want to say this to you. I don't know if there's a greater compliment can be given that someone would look at me and you and say, you remind me of Jesus in 130 ways. Does anybody else want that testimony? Amen. Amen. Uh, I appreciate Elijah. Elijah is a type and shadow of John the Baptist. I'd like to be like John the Baptist, but I think it'd be a better thing to be known as being somebody like Jesus. Amen. Uh, I want to focus just a little bit, and we'll stay here. Uh, if we could give you a title tonight, give you a thought, I'd like to give you this title, The Treasure of Separation. The Treasure of Separation. Uh, if you need a more detailed title for tonight, maybe you don't like that, here's one that will help you. Tired of same old, same old. Tired of same old, same old. Then cometh he to the city of Samaria. This is a place that the Jews have no dealings. And the reason that the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans is because of the God that they've chosen. It's also because they've chosen false gods. It's, they have... The Jews view the Samaritans as castaways and as castouts. This is a place which is called Sychar. Near, it's close to the parcel of ground that Israel gave to his son and Joseph. I, I, I want to say this to you. The well, Jacob's well, is here at Sychar. And this is close to the gift of God. If you'll have it that way, would that be fine with you? Yeah. This is close to the gift of God. And it's not just close to the gift of God, but it's close to the people of God. I, I, I want to say this to you. Uh, and my friend, when we look at Israel, we're looking at a nation uh, when it comes down to the Old Testament. But can I remind you of something? When it comes down to heaven, you could be born in Israel, you could be born in Jersey, you could be born in Australia. You're going to need to be born again to get to heaven. Amen. 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 Uh, I, I want to say this to you, though. If we can look just sharply for just a few moments at verse number 5, uh, this is where Jacob's well was, as we read in verse number 6. And there's a lady that comes out to Jacob's well every day. Uh, but the problem is, uh, the ladies there, the Samaritan ladies, would always come out at a later time to draw water. Uh, but the lady at the well of Samaria, stay with me, can I please? Uh, she came out about the sixth hour, uh, which is about early morning to uh, almost noon, if you'll have it. 
Uh, that way she was sure not to be around the people that were ashamed of her uh, because she was ashamed of her own living. And I, I want to preach tonight. You and I need to get sick and tired of being 98% right with God. You and I need to get tired of always getting close to God, but never being right where we should be. Amen. Uh, there has to be a time and, uh, for this lady. She never got there. If Jesus had not have sat on that well, she would have continued the rest of her life being near the people of God, but never one of the people of God. If Jesus had not have sat down on that well, she would have spent the rest of her life being near God, but never being in God. Does that make sense? I, I, I want to say this. We, how we read in this Bible like how many stories that have come up, and we read about how that a lady with the issue of blood, she had had this issue for 12 years, and how we read of this, this man that had sat by the pool of Bethesda, and there he was for 38 years, and how we read of this lady that how she's done this, she's come this well, and I don't know how long she's done this, but here's what I do know, how later on when we get deeper in the scripture, we'll find that Jesus says, go and call your husband. And the woman would look at him and say, sir, I have no husband. And Jesus would reply, you well said you have no husband. How about you had five? And the one you have now, he's not your own. So we know that she has been close to God. She's been close to the people of God. But she's never truly been right with God. And she's never truly been in God. And she's been in that case uh, for at least five marriages. Amen. Uh, statistically speaking, uh, marriages nowadays uh, usually don't make it past four years. Uh, three to four years, I believe I looked up this week. Uh, three to four years is about as far as marriages will go. Uh, so this is what I know. Uh, just statistically speaking, amen, that if she had five marriages, amen, five times three, fifteen, amen, this lady had spent at least 15 to 20 years amen if we can look at her, are you with me tonight amen she spent almost all of her life amen being close to the people of God amen if I could put it in real life terms amen she had been amen halfway and half out saint amen she had been three quarters saint and she went to church a good bit of the time and maybe even went some of the time but amen I'm using this for nowadays Oh! 
see tonight, church, help we need a separation. And I'm not preaching to hate in the church down the road. I'm not preaching to hate in everybody else on YouTube. I hope all of our people have watched what we do on YouTube. Amen. Hey, listen, I believe we've just about come to a place. Hey, 
Methodist tonight. Uh, what church? I, uh, Chase is just going to preach. Amen. A night or two on this. Amen. We'll get off of it. Amen. Is it okay if I just let you know something? I believe God wants to do something in our church. And I believe God wants to do something in our homes. And, and well, Chase, I don't know. The devil's fighting awful hard. And Chase, I'm battling some things. And, and Chase, I'm struggling real bad. I understand that. And, but can I give you a verse that's often misquoted and a verse that's often struggled with and taken out of context? And it would be this, Miss Carrie. Amen. Jesus and Peter are having a conversation. And the preacher Joshua, the conversation would go like this. Who do you say that I am? And Peter says, some say you're Elias. Some say you're one of the prophets. And some even say you're John the Baptist. And Caitlin, Jesus just hushes him up and says, that's good for everybody else. But who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jessica, and say it's not. 
single day. Yeah. And it was near. I, I, I want to read it to you one more time. Then he came into the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar. It's near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to Joseph. I can turn that and tell you that it's near the parcel of ground that God gave to Joseph. To Jacob. Can I let you know something? Hey Amen. Honey, if you got victory, you didn't get it from your family. You got it from God. Amen. Can I let you know that if you got hope, you didn't get it from the preacher. You got it from Jesus. Amen. This parcel of ground. Well, I feel just a little bit of the preach coming. You hang on just a minute. Listen to me. Can I just let you know something? There are some things that God's promised us, Caitlin. Amen. And this was ground, Nancy, that God gave to Jacob. Right. Can I say this to you? Bob, Lord, have mercy. Right. There's some lost people, Karen, that God's told me himself he's going to save. And I declare my time. I am about to get this close to it. Just for the devil to swallow them up. No sir, no man. Listen, my beloved friend. Can I just let you know something? There's little yellows around here that start to pay real close attention to some things. My God in heaven, church, I ain't about to get this close to it. I'm just to look at what God's promised us and say, well, Lord, we got close, and close is good enough. Amen. Listen to me. Can I just make a little bit of a comment here? Amen. I know we're living in COVID era, and I'm not talking about that at all. But there's a lot of churches now. Amen. That wouldn't have done YouTube services five years ago. Amen. But they're doing it now. A lot of churches wouldn't put their services on Facebook five years ago, but they're doing it now. And then five years ago, YouTube was the devil to a lot of people. Can you say amen? Yeah. Facebook was the devil. Boy, I'm losing it. Amen. Yeah. Come on back. Amen. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. But can I let you know something? Amen. And I appreciate all the social media services. Yeah. But boy, if there's one thing that you cannot watch from a TV, and you can't watch from a cell phone screen, you being right with God. Amen and amen. But boy, I saw something the other day. Holly, bless my soul. But what would it be, Waylon, if we got to heaven? Amen in Jesus. But we got right to the gate, Rob. And Jesus had a TV screen driving set out in front of heaven. And he had some cell phone screens set out. And said, well, the only way he wanted it was through a TV screen or through a phone screen. And so just sit outside the gate and watch heaven on the screen. Amen. Yes. Boy, boy, boy. Amen. Can I just let you know something for a little bit? Amen. Sharon, I love what God can do. And I'm letting you know something. I, I'm going to appreciate. And, and can I just preach to you for just a minute? I believe God's going to bless this church. And that ain't me trying to get an amen out of you. That's just facts. But can I let you know, when folks start coming to the altar and getting born again, I don't want to sit there and have the window shout. Can you hear what I'm saying? What do you mean? I'm being in such a discouraged state. Because I got satisfied with being discouraged. But when they come off the altar and look their daddy and their mom in the face and say, I just got saved. That I have to look at it and say, well, praise God. Hey, Amen. And I have to fake up some joy. And I got to fake up some tears. Honey, when heaven is shouting on the altar, I want to be right in the thick of it. Hey, Amen. But there's some folks that, hey, Amen, I'm going to preach faith because that's what it is. Hey, Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hey, Amen. Come listen, there's folks. Hey, Amen. That's going to come back and get right with God. Going to get back in church. But they're going to. But can I let you know something? I don't want to be in such a sin ridden state. Because I realize, Karen, that there's some sins that I can be. There's some sins I'll overcome. But Josh, God have mercy, man. There's a couple things that if the devil throws them out my way, I'm as good as done. Amen. And boy, those couple of things, Holly, have the devil thrown my way. And then when God starts answering prayers, Amen. I have to sit back, Randy, and go, well, at least I'm close to it. Amen. Right. Listen to me, my beloved friend. I won't let you know if we're not far from being done. There's going to have to be a time that you and I get tired of being near it. There's going to have to be a time we get tired of being close to being right with God. There's going to have to be a time that we get tired of being wishy-washy. There's going to have to be a time that we get tired of almost knowing that we're born again. There's going to have to be a time that we 
there's some, there some pieces of ground that God's promised you. And it's going to cost you a lot if you build your life outside of that piece of ground. Can I talk about you for half a second? Rob and Karen have moved a couple of times and the house that Caitlin and Cody are living in now is right across the pond from where Rob and Karen used to live. Am I telling it right? Yeah. And if you sit in Cody and Caitlin's and Bob and, yeah, you can see Bob and Jean's house from across the pond. Right. Right. You can also see their old house. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, my God, heaven, this is the perfect setup for Nosy Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever moves in my old house, I can sit on my back porch. Yeah. That, that ain't how I move the trash. <laughs> that ain't where they need to put that grill. Yeah. Hey, can I let you know something just real quick? I believe there are people that have bought ground spiritually right outside of where God wants them to be. Yes. Yeah. 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 Just so they can look at it and go, that's how happy I could be. That's how right with God I could be. And what, how much do you have to spend? A few hundred thousand? Just so you can park real, real close to where God wanted you. Are you hearing me? Hey, that don't matter we're going to end here. That don't matter much to the same people. Well, why? You can be lukewarm the rest of your days. And guess what's going to happen to you when you die? You're still going to go to heaven. Amen. You could have lived a joyful life, but you didn't. You could have made an impact for the cause of Christ, but you didn't. But boy, you were born again, though. Ain't I there? Amen. Amen. Thank God we ain't going to have a carnal mind in glory because there's going to be some Baptists that hardly ever darken the door of the church. But come glory day, here they come. And I wish we could have our Baptist mind. It's getting cold in here. Amen. I wish we could have our Baptist minds when they come walking up in their robes of white and us just look at them and go, Really? God, can we at least put them in the back of the line? I don't know about you, but I don't want to be one to stack the saints and get a stake out from Apostle Paul. <laughs> John the Baptist is looking at us with his charger in his hand and he got beheaded for the gospel. And we got folks that quit church because nobody shook their hand. Come on, Come on. And him just hold his charger up and go, I got beheaded <laughs> so they could quit church because nobody called them. Oh, 
case he got to walk with Elijah. Well, praise God. I'm, can I preach blood? You with me? I'm glad you got me here for Bob Bo. I'm glad you got me here. I'm glad you got me under his pastorship. I'm glad you got me with Brother Bud. I'm glad you got me with some of the heroes of faith. I'm glad you got me. Amen. With Brother, Brother Randy and Miss Nancy. There's other Jesus heroes in our church. I'm glad you got to be here with them. But can I let you know something? If you're living your Christian life in awe because you've got to be with some Jesus heroes, you've got to be with some folks you looked up to in the faith, bless God, that still doesn't mean you walk with Jesus. What a shame it would be to live all your life hanging on the one sin, a couple of sins, a couple of issues, a couple of hardships, just some things that you couldn't reason out in your life. And you hang on, you hung on to those things. And then it came time for the mantle to fall. It came time for the waters to part. And you looked up at God and said, I believe I'm going to hang on to this sin. I believe I'm going to hang on to this little bit of doubt. I believe I'm going to hang on to this hurt that I've got for people. I can't believe some Christians did this. And God looks at you and says, then you won't get to be a part of my awesomeness. But hey, at least you got to be with some of my saints. Does anybody want more than that? But can I let you know something? We'll end here. This lady, I appreciate your kind attention on that. This lady was not born again. Can you say amen? Anybody there? How do we know? She got the gift of God. Can I preach to everybody that's listening? If there's anybody in the house, you've been living fine being close to being saved. You've been living fine living off your baptism, but there's still something wrong. You've been living fine with church membership. You've been living fine with people telling you you're okay. But you've been living fine living near it. Right. But never had it. And that means a lot because it kind of just preach the gospel. I'm done. I'm not going to tarry. There are preachers, Josh, that knew they didn't have it, but man, they told everybody about it. You know what that is? They live near it. There's people that sit in church all their life, Jessica, and they live near it, but never had it. And they wouldn't separate themselves from being near it to go after it. And you don't know what happened? You know what happened. I'm going to Rob come saying, hey folks, we have this. You don't care. I got about two minutes, folks, is on the way. Hey, can I tell y'all a story that y'all gonna laugh at? You ready? It's gonna be a good belly laugh. You know, one of those laughs that just helps your whole body. Hey, I like those people laugh like that. It just takes over the whole body. Some of y'all gonna hate this story. There's a church I know of in Middle Tennessee. They have a bonfire every year. How many of you would like to have a bonfire at the church? Anybody like to have a bonfire? Me and Ryland Dawson, Jackson. Boy, what I love about that is those are my name is I hate this story. Amen. Richie would too. He'd be fine. So, every year they have a bonfire. You want to know what they call it? I believe it's Acts 19. They call it Acts 19 Bonfire. <laughs> You know what they do? They bring everything that they feel is getting between them and God and they burn it. You think I'm silly on you? They don't go, listen to this foolishness. If they, if they threw in the fire a 75 inch flat screen and then went and bought them one. <laughs> I'll never forget, I preached on this in church when I'm in mean, serious. Jesus is still in this. I know I'm fine. I preached on this one time.
time on earth. And the brother got convicted because his TV time was taken away from his Bible study. And it was taken away from his prayer time. So he put his, this is back when 50 inch TVs were the thing. Put his 50 inch screen TV in his truck and took, took it to his pastor's house. And you know what the pastor looked at him and said? Why are you giving me your sin trash it? Whenever you get that, you'll say, <coughs> well, I'll tell you what I'll do with it. I'll sell it. Yeah, glory to God. <laughs> but you don't know what these folks do. If it's their flat screen TV, bring it burn it. If it's their novels that are taking place of their time with Jesus, they'll bring their novels chuck it. There's teenagers. This is back when Xbox 360 was a thing. Bring their Xboxes. They weren't made to. But there were some folks that had instilled in those kids it doesn't matter if you're near God. The goal is to be right with God. Teenagers bring their Xboxes and their Playstations told this story at a youth meeting. And you all know what happened? I had about four teenagers look at me and go, Phew. and there was a kid sitting right next to him and said this, what if that meant I got saved? Yeah. I said, hell, glory to God. What if means you get serious with Jesus? Permanently serious. Man, our loved ones get rededicated. What if it meant us finally burying some things that's been burying our Christian lives? What if separating ourselves from it meant that people we love got what they needed from Jesus? Are you with me? What if us getting truly serious with God meant our loved ones get born again? Would it be worth it? Hey, and I know he's ready, but what if we declare the fast? Don't know if choke on me. I'm not talking about food. But can I ask you something? How many of you would agree that if we compare your phone time to your prayer time, it's embarrassing? Amen. I'll raise my hand. Yeah. What if we declare the fast? Hey, usually when I get home from work, get everything cleared up, done. Boom! Phone I am. What about the first 30 minutes of you getting home? Instead of getting that phone out, you go to your prayer place. You pray it out. Anybody there? Hey, here's the truth. Yes. I'll tell you how bad we all are. Luke and Chase. There's things that we know we're losing at. That it's turned into, I know I can do better, but. Then you want to know what we all need to do? It's going to be real strict. You ain't going to like it, none. Then we just need to go ahead and be satisfied being about 95% close to God. If anybody wants more than that, there's a God that desires it. God bless you. Let's stand. Let's stand. Folks, you come on off for me to ask for help. Y'all do that. Folks, need your hand. Y'all do that. God bless you. There is God
I say praise God, don't you? Hey, I'm going to make a statement. I'm going to make two. Take them for what I'm saying. Don't look any deeper. Is that fine with you? Yeah. Hey, I, I believe in going and paying respects to the loved ones that passed on. Going to the cemetery, I believe in that. Uh, but, but is it okay if I use a comparison real quick? That'd be fine with you. There was a man in the Bible named Legion. Do you remember him? Yes, Had his dwelling among the tombs. Not the graves. Is it okay if I let you know something? I, th I think it's it's time for Chase and it's time for God's people. It's hard because that's who's here. There's sometimes we're spending too much time. And remember, I'm not talking about physical graveyards. I'm talking about sin. Are you with me? I believe we're paying too much attention to the things that only bring us death. Are you there? Chase, I'll, I'll never be able to beat that. I'll never, that, 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 that sin's who I am. Hey, Legion, can I remind you of something? You're clothed and in your right mind. Don't go back to the tomb. Are you with me? Here's, and, and, and I'll say this to you. I've had my addiction issues. I've had my sins. I, I've got my faults and I've got my failures. But, Randy, there's nothing in me that needs to walk up to stubbornness and say, hey, I want to thank you for every problem you've caused me. Anybody there? Yeah. How many of y'all got tempers? Anybody got a temper? Amen. Amen. I saw two people raise their hand. That's the most two doubtful people I ever thought about. Rhonda and Dawson raised their hand. Amen. <laughs> Never would have seen that coming in my life. There's nothing in me that needs to walk up to anger and say, hey, I want to thank you for every person I've hurt because of you. I want to thank you for being a motivator. I want to thank you, Anger, for everything you've done for me. Is that right? There's nothing in me that needs to have to battle with depression. I'll raise my hand. I don't need to walk up to depression and say, hey, I want to thank you for everything you're doing in my life. I don't need to walk up to discouragement and say, hey, I appreciate you. I don't need to walk up to failure and say, hey, you're doing me real good in my life. I don't need to walk up to sin and say, hey, boy, I appreciate you. You know what I need to do? I need to separate. Here's my prayer for you, my prayer for me. Here's my prayer for this church. God, don't let me be the preacher I want to be. Help me want to be the preacher you want me to be. Right. Don't let me be the pre don't let me be the Christian I'm fine with being. Help me be the Christian you want me to be. Right. Amen. And Lord, my prayer for our church. God, don't let seasons dictate who we are. Yeah. Help us, God, be the church that you want us to be. Right. Amen. I talked to, say this, and we'll turn it to the church. I appreciate your kind patience tonight, by the way. I talked to a preacher last night, getting ready to start pastoring, possibly. And I told him, he was talking about how agitated he is with COVID. And, uh, yeah, I told him. I said, man, here's the thing. I said, if you're getting ready to start pastoring again, you're going to have to stop being so agitated at the people that ain't coming. He said, but Chase, they go everywhere else, but they won't come to church. I said, when do you preach that? He said, I took my church at all the time. I said, so you're telling me you're whipping the people that are there because of the people that ain't there. Yeah. Yeah. Love the people you got and let's go on. Yeah. 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 I, there's, we're, we're missing so many people. On, on a good Sunday morning, we're missing so many people. But we can still be the church God wants us to be. Church, listen to me. If we can't grow and we can't evolve, we're not being the church God wants us to be. We're being who we're comfortable being. Is that right? It's true. I ain't going to let sin or season dictate our church. Are you hearing me? Well, I wish I had some cheering for some time. <laughs> yeah, help me. Amen. I don't know.
only sin and season and Satan should dictate who a church is. I believe we ought to be who God wants us to be. Right. Amen. I appreciate you. Don't forget, tomorrow night, uh, men's Bible study at 7 o'clock here at the church. If you can make it, boy, that would be appreciative. Uh, looking forward to getting back into men's Bible study. Uh, if you need a spoiler for something to motivate you to get you here, we're going to start taking a look. God will, unless he changes the channel. We're going to start taking a look at some of the things that non-believing men, tell me, non-believing men, there it is, that non-believing men have right. I want to take a look at it. Uh, so be much in prayer for that. Any other announcements I'm missing, don't forget, Brother David Kaufman is going to be at Hillside Wednesday. Uh, March 12th, we'll yeah. March 12th, be much in prayer for that meeting. Anything else I'm missing or overlooking?